I'm going to evaluate the indefinite integral x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 2. We're going to have two methods for doing this. For my first method, I'm just going to do the long division. Of course, I'm not going to actually do the long division. I'm going to replace that with something a little slicker, synthetic division. For my synthetic division, I set up a little L on its side like this. I take a look at the bottom. I have x plus 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus c. We write, write that as x minus c. That means my c is minus 2, so I put it there. For this first row, we're going to load up all the coefficients for my polynomial on top. So it'll be 1, minus 2, 1, and 1. And now I can start the synthetic division. The 1 here just drops, giving me a 1. I hit it with the minus 2 and put that number in the middle column, 1 over. We add this column that gives me a minus 4. Minus 2 hits the minus 4, giving me an 8. The 1 comes down, hits the 8, giving me a 9 when I add them. The minus 2 hits the 9, giving me a minus 18 in this column. The 1 comes down, adds to minus 18, giving me a minus 17. And now all I need to do is interpret the answer. The very last number here is the remainder upon long division. The 1 minus 4 and 9 are going to give me a polynomial x squared minus 4x plus 9. It's going to have to be one degree less than the polynomial we started with. And the way I interpret all this is my original polynomial equals x plus 2 times the polynomial that comes out of the synthetic division minus the, plus the remainder, which is minus 17. Now I can use this to get to work on the antiderivative. Okay, we are going to have x squared minus 4x plus 9 minus 17 over x plus 2. Okay, this first part, I put a later up here. When I get to the next page, I'm going to use this to check the answer. So let's take the antiderivative of each term. For this part, it's the usual rules. Add one, flip it over. And if I have a constant, I just multiply by x. So 1 third x cubed minus 2x squared plus 9x. For this part here, let's take a look. I have dx over x plus 2. I can use substitute. u equals x plus 2. du equals dx. So I have du over u. When I take the antiderivative, I get natural log of absolute value of u plus a constant. Don't forget your absolute value of u. Depends on how persnickety your professor is. I substitute back in for x plus 2. And that gives me this. Put that back into the original, and so we just have minus 17 natural log absolute value x plus 2 plus a constant. So that's my indefinite integral. Second method, we're just going to do our usual u substitution. So I substitute out u for the bottom. du is going to be equal to dx, and then x equals u minus 2. Wherever I see an x in top, I'm going to put a u minus 2. It's going to give me this all over u. It's kind of a mess, but it will be manageable, and you won't have to do any long division at all. Let's take a look. I expand each of these powers. Put that over u. When I clean everything up, I'm looking at this polynomial over u. I divide u into each term, and I'm left with this polynomial here, minus 17 over u. Okay, for the first three, add 1, flip it over, and we multiply the 21 by u. So that gives me these first three. Then here, that's just 17 times natural log of absolute value of u, plus a constant. I put my x plus 2 back in for u, and I get my answer here. And you notice this looks nothing like the answer we have on our first board. So to check, and here all I'm checking is that 
method one agrees with method two. I'm just going to check does the derivative equal this x squared minus 4x plus 9 minus 17 over x plus 2 that we took our antiderivative of on the last board. Let's take a look. Take my 3 down, that gives me x plus 2 squared. 2 comes down, giving me minus 8 x plus 2. Derivative of this gives me 21. Derivative of this gives me 17 over x plus 2. I expand these two terms. So we get this and this, and I add everything up. And I notice I get the x squared minus 4x plus 9 minus 17 over x plus 2 as promised.